breaking news, weather and traffic, 95.9 WATD FM, Marshfield, streaming 24-7 at 95.9 WATD.com. Welcome to the Natural Health and Healing Show with one of New England's leading nutritionists, Mark Minkola. The show is brought to you by the Good Health Stores in Hanover and Quincy. Call Mark at 781-837-4900 with your health and nutrition questions. Now, here's Mark. Good evening and welcome. And Catherine Foley, welcome to you. Good evening. How are you? We missed you last week. Yeah, I missed you guys as well. Busy trade show, though. Yeah, we were at the Natural Products um, trade show on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Um, It was wonderful. Attendance was up by 20%. There was lots of interest, lots of buzz um, from the JARO standpoint. Um, You know, we're continuing to reinforce and do more clinical studies on our products. So we're seeing the industry mature in a very nice way. (laughs) Incredible. And isn't that astounding to think that uh, 20% increase in attendance over a year ago uh, during a time of economic strife. Tough economy. Phenomenal. Yeah, it's amazing. Fantastic. Well, you look fresh as a daisy. Thank you. (laughs) And and some good things are happening for you and, and couldn't happen to a more deserving, wonderful person. Thank you very much. And, you know, every Sunday night for the past seven years, I've signed off with the following. Be wise, be aware, and be well. And there should be no doubt that in order to be well, you must first be willing to make the commitment to both wisdom and awareness. And um, this week, the past two weeks, there's been some remarkably disturbing news uh, regarding the uh, pharmaceutical industry. Uh, There was an article that I found, actually, uh, that I could not find anywhere in the American press. Mm. I only found it in the Canadian press. And in Canada, uh, there's a great deal of buzz about it with the television networks in Canada. Also, I found the uh, specific article we're going to talk about in the Toronto Sun. Okay. Uh, But Baxter Pharmaceutical admitted to contamination of seasonal flu vaccine product with a live bird flu virus. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and the company that released contaminated flu virus material from a plant in Austria confirmed Friday that the experimental products contained live avian flu viruses. So uh, it's really a disturbing bit of information. But, um, you know, there are questions to be asked here regarding why did this happen, of course, and that's exactly what officials at the World Health Organization in Europe are trying to discover as we speak. Uh, But the contaminated product was a mix of seasonal flu virus and unlabeled bird flu viruses. Wow. And uh, there were apparently 35 to 37 folks who were exposed. Wow. Uh, So there is concern by some that this this, uh, is being very closely watched because of the pandemic potential of this. Right. But, um, you know, I think to me there's some really remarkable sides to this story. Uh, For example, when they say that it looks like human error, I think to myself, the code, the BSL-3 code, the laboratory code that's in practice, uh, you'd have an easier time, you know, finding your way into the White House. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a tourist yeah. than you would violating the BSL-3 code. So I'm trying to figure out how you take a potentially lethal right. virus and combine it in the same laboratory, intermix it in the same uh, samplings with a flu vaccine. You know, and that's really interesting because, and I'm probably going to misquote myself because it's been several years since I've been out of of school, but um, as far as biologics are concerned in a laboratory setting, um, you know, there's class A, B, and C Mm -hmm. biologics, and the flu vaccine is probably considered a class A. That's right. Whereas um, the avian flu virus is considered a class C and would have to be in a separate facility. A separate facility, absolutely true. Plus, the fail-safes... uh, it, you know, the checkpoints have checkpoints for every checkpoint. Right. Uh, it has mm-hmm. multiple safety backups that must be signed off on right. from door to door to door to door, right. much 
less facility to facility. Yeah. Uh, the probability of human error, as they claim at Baxter, such as uh, commingled flu viruses with a killer avian virus in the backdrop of a safety code uh, enforced BSL-3, is about a billion to one. So. Yeah, Mark, it's, it's almost a, it, it really is almost the difference of, you know, um, filling a prescription and making a mistake between anthrax and Xanax. It clearly is. You know, it's, it's that, it's, there's, they are that much different in the world of biologics. Therefore, suspicious folks uh, such as uh, myself here are more inclined to think of a rogue element uh, right. involved in this. And my only major question, not my only question, but my only major question is, was it an internal rogue element or an external rogue element? Was it somebody within the company? Uh, one of the things, if you do a little bit of research, you find that Baxter Pharmaceutical owns the patents to Tamiflu. Okay. So your imagination can run pretty wild with all this stuff. Tamiflu is the FDA-approved treatment for avian that is correct, yeah, and that is owned by uh, Baxter Pharmaceutical, where, where all this took place. Uh, so there's some remarkable, interesting questions that we're going to run by. But, I mean, ultimately, on the positive end of this, what we're looking to do is inform people. Uh, and, and, of course, as I said earlier, there are virtually no agencies in the United States running this story. Right. You have to go to Canada and the Canadian agencies. Canadian television has been big with this story. Uh, the, the 26th of February was actually the very first alarm that sounded with this particular story. Wow. Um, and March 5th, were, there were another series, another wave of stories that came through the Canadian press. The Toronto Sun was uh, the leader in those stories. And, uh, you know, there's some serious questions that uh, Canadian officials and now the Canadian public is asking. Uh, the American public, on the other hand, isn't even informed, doesn't even know about it. Uh, and no surprise there. Well, you know, it's quite interesting because just a couple of weeks ago, we had mentioned on air there was that young kid who went in for a flu vaccine and came home. And then, you know, hours later was admitted to the ER and yes. died. So that's, and you don't really hear anything about follow up to that. No question about it. This is a story that uh, has some real strong legs, and the American public is starting to get a little bit of a taste of it through programs like this and, of course, through the Internet. Yeah. You can't keep a lid on things like you used to be able to. No, you're so, uh, so, you know, in some respects, thank God for the Internet. And yeah. I emphasize in some respects. <laughs> no. and, and this would be one of those respects. But, again, uh, Baxter Pharmaceutical admits contaminated seasonal flu product contain live bird flu virus. Wow. Uh, that is just a remarkable story, and uh, there's a great deal to it. There's a number of angles and a number of questions. We're going to review those with you this evening. We're going to get you up to speed on the story. And as I said a moment ago, most importantly, we're going to empower you not just with uh, the information of this story, but with better information regarding how to naturally uh, protect yourself and support your immune system in the event of any kind of viral mishaps. Mm -hmm. uh, there is already an acknowledged antidote for the avian flu. Mm -hmm. It was established in 1982 at the Center for Disease Control. Yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, however, nobody knows about it. So we're going to talk about that. It's about uh, 15 to $20 a container. Yep. <laughs> it's available over the counter, and uh, it's easy to obtain, easy to use, safe to use. Yeah. comes in a variety of different forms, and we're going to talk about that and uh, provide you not only with a story that is very important to you, uh, but also we're going to provide you with solutions which are also ever so elusive. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. This is Catherine from Jaro Formulas. We're happy to have continued our relationship with Mark Mancola in the Health and Healing Show. And we're happy to announce a new product from Jaro Formulas called Jaro Cell. We all know that as the body age, it heals less rapidly and becomes frailer. Often the body is unable to process enough nutrients to repair weakening cartilage and protein fibers. A very important element in building and repairing your body is silicon. But unfortunately, as we grow, you may have difficulty absorbing adequate silicon from your diet. But now, thanks to a product called Jaro Cell, 
you can be sure to get your share. Jarosil can give you the silicon you need to support your bone health, bone mineral density, and in addition, Jarosil strengthens and beautifies your hair, skin, and nails. Jarosil is available now in a synergistic liquid formula that also includes boron and zinc. Ask for Jarosil at your local health food stores. Or for more information, you can go to the Jaro website, which is www.jaro.com. Right in our area, we are fortunate to have one of the top martial arts schools in the country. Personal Best Karate. Personal Best has been recognized for their community involvement, professional staff development, character building programs, and exciting educational curriculum. Personal Best stands at the top of their industry. Five locations offering personalized professional instruction. Not sure if karate is right for you? At no obligation, the staff at Personal Best will guide you in a private introductory program to see if karate is indeed the right fit to help you achieve your goals and meet your needs. What does karate at Personal Best teach you? Character building, success habits, helps you get in shape, relieve stress, self-control, setting goals, and of course, self-defense. Personal Best goal is to create successful, contributing members of society through the practice of the martial arts at Personal Best. Mr. Chris Rappold is, of course, the founder of Personal Best Karate. He tells me his greatest joy of all is to see the personal transformation in each and every student. Bring out your best with Personal Best Karate. Telephone number 508-285-5425. That's 508 285 5425 locations in Norton, Foxborough, Southeastern, Franklin, and Taunton. That's Personal Best Karate. Alrighty, welcome back. And we hope you're having uh, a lovely weekend. It was certainly a beautiful, beautiful day today and uh, yesterday as well. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like just a little bit of a hint of spring in the air. Yep. When it starts to hit 50 and get a little sunny, <laughs> talk to your friends in Florida and you say, oh, no, it's great up here. Because yeah. whenever you speak to your friends in Florida and it's uh, winter yeah. up here, they always say, what's the weather like up there? Uh, yeah, the front door opened. That is the official opening of summer. The official. For, for me, opening up the, that the front official porch opening door. Of, so that's great. Well, <laughs> Good good days yet ahead, so yeah. stay tuned to that. All right. Um, as promised, we're going to talk to you about a, a very important uh, bit of news here this evening, and we're going to kind of tie it in with how you can be wise, be aware, and be well, and make a difference uh, in an area that uh, likely is uh, going to come into play very soon, if not already. But anyway, Baxter Pharmaceutical, uh, unfortunately, was bagged about 10 days ago or so. Uh, with a contaminated seasonal flu product that contained live bird flu virus. And I'm just going to read on just a little bit here. The company that released contaminated flu virus material from a plant in Austria confirmed Friday that the experimental product contained live avian flu viruses. And an official of the World Health Organization's European operation said the body is closely monitoring the investigation into the events that took place at Baxter International's research facility in Austria. What remains unanswered are the circumstances surrounding the incident in the Baxter uh, facility. The contaminated product was a mix of seasonal flu viruses and unlabeled bird flu viruses. It was supplied to an Austrian research company, the Austrian firm, then sent portions of it to subcontractors in the Czech Republic, Slovenia, and Germany. On Friday, the company's director of global bioscience communications confirmed what scientists have suspected. It was live. People familiar with biosecurity rules are dismayed by evidence that human um, H3N2 and avian H5N1 viruses somehow commingled in the facility. Accidental releases of a mixture of live H5N1 and H3N2 viruses could have resulted in dire consequences. If someone exposed to a mixture of these two strains had been simultaneously infected with both strains, he or she could have served as an incubator for a hybrid virus able to transmit easily to and among people that mixing process called reassortment is one of two ways pandemic viruses are created. Baxter has not shed much light, at least not publicly, on how the accident happened. It's being blamed on human error. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And again, I say to you, how could you possibly blame it on human error when you're dealing with the BSL-3 laboratory code? The BSL-3 laboratory code is designed to contain agents mm -hmm. that may cause serious or lethal disease as a result of contact or inhalation. Laboratory personnel have specific training in handling disease-producing and potentially lethal agents and are supervised by competent scientists who are experiencing in working with these agents. All procedures involving infectious materials are conducted within biological safety cabinets mm -hmm. or other physical containment services. Personal, uh, personnel wearing appropriate personal protective clothing and equipment conduct these procedures. The laboratory incorporates design features that restrict access to the facility, limit exposure to disease-causing uh, agents, and prevent pathogens from leaving the facility and presenting a risk to the community at large. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a fail-safe system, the BSL-3 code, as you already pointed out. Yeah. One of these viruses uh, was clearly a virus that had no business being in the facility that it was in. Forget intermixing with a, with a common flu virus. Yeah, and, you know, that is what is so... Um scary about that. I mean, not only is it in a separate facility, but typically these types of biologics, you know, the personnel has to be completely suited in a biohazard suit with full ventilation and the, the, the facility itself has to have its own separate ventilation from the rest of the facility. So, right. you know, somebody would have had to take it out of that um, lab and walk it to a different facility under protective <laughs> gear. Right. So they wouldn't get exposed Absolutely. themselves, you know. So it, it, that is just very bizarre. Well, the Canadian television uh, network and the Canadian press published this little piece on the 26th of February. Uh, they mentioned that there were 36 or 37 people who were exposed. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's still no word as to whether they were contaminated. Wow, well, where they are. Uh, so they're still investigating that. The World Health Organization in Europe is. Uh, also, they go on to tell us, research published last summer by scientists at the U.S. Center for Disease Control found that in the laboratory, these two viruses mated readily. Oh, boy. Readily. So uh, the facility has uh, basically... Uh, got a lot of work to do in terms of uh, availing exactly where the breakdown was. And, right. and uh, you know, unfortunately, what people need to realize is that this, this is the kind of thing that is happening when we're not looking. Right. And we should be able to trust yeah. and uh, have confidence in, you know, both the, uh, the system from a political perspective, World Health Organization, uh, the, you know, the, those in charge of governing these facilities and uh, making certain that the laboratory codes are strictly enforced. Right. Uh, we should be able to count on those folks to get the job done. Otherwise, how safe are we? Right. At, uh, in general, as the public at large, and, and I think the answer is really not very. Yeah, it's a situation I, I always say whenever you make a decision to give up your right to your own personal health care, you have to be extra diligent in following, you know, the, the paper trail and making decisions for yourself with extreme care, you know, whenever you're handing, you know, I mean, the flu vaccine is, it's quite an intense procedure. You're getting, you know, attenuated viruses injected right into your bloodstream. Right. And this is a, a very risky, it has been safe for many years. Yeah. But just the process is, is it worth the benefit? I always have to ask people, you know. Well, you know, I think that again, you know, when I'm thinking of an issue like this, you know, the, the burning question to me is, how is it that the American public knows virtually nothing about this? Mm -hmm. How is it that there are no major news agencies in the United States of America reporting on this? Yeah. And how and why is it that they're all reporting on it everywhere else in the world? Right. And obviously, um, there's an awful lot of politicizing going on here and a lot of control measure going on here. Oh, absolutely. They, You know, the focus is more or less on Hollywood and you know, pop culture than it is about real, you know, issues or news that's happening within their borders. Well, and Baxter is the only flu vaccine maker or yeah. manufacturer to work with uh, very wild type flu viruses, felt mm -hmm. to be more dangerous than the altered attenuated weakened viruses that other manufacturers use. Right. But the other thing, as we've said earlier, is that Baxter uh, Pharmaceutical actually owns all the rights to Tamiflu. Mm -hmm. Tamiflu, of course, is the is the antidote mm -hmm. to bird flu. Right. 
So, you know, there are those folks who are questioning whether or not this was a rogue act within the facility within the system and whether things like this have happened before. There's sure. a lot of questions that a lot of folks are asking, and to me, we're not getting nearly enough answers here. Sure. Is it the potential to increase sales of a product that, you know, was developed and they hold the patent for? Not you know? beyond reason. Not yeah. beyond reason. And for those of you who are thinking, all right, now you guys are just getting a little too <laughs> conspiratorial out there, a little too paranoid, um, I, I would submit that... Uh, Back on the 22nd of May in the year 2003, there's an interesting story that appeared in the New York Times. According to the New York Times, records suggest that the reason for continuing to sell AIDS-infected blood products was to get rid of inventory, and the company hoped to preserve the profit margin from several large fixed-price contracts. Now, what, what, what am I talking about here? Uh, the International Bear Company documents by the New York Times reveals that the company was engaged in unsavory and probably criminal marketing practices. The documents reveal that Bayer continued to sell contaminated blood plasma, causing thousands of hemophiliac patients to be infected with AIDS. Mm -hmm. The company continued to sell the contaminated blood in Asia for over a year when it had already introduced a safer, heated blood plasma version in the United States and Europe in February. Mm -hmm. um, so, the New York Times documented that uh, the records did indeed suggest that the reason for continuing to sell this AIDS-infected blood product was to get rid of inventory. The company hoped to preserve the profit margin from several large fixed-price contracts. This previously uninvestigated case demonstrates how this industry's lies and crimes are shielded by officials of the Food and Drug Administration. The Times reports that in 1985, FDA's Dr. Harry Meyer willingly helped Bayer cover up one of the worst drug-related medical disasters in history. Meyer suggested that the issue should be quietly solved without alerting the Congress, the medical community, and the public. Mm -hmm. This culture of accommodation continues to prevail in the FDA. And, uh, you know, currently Bayer, through its subsidiary Bayer Crop Science, is also applying pressure on the Env Environmental Protection Agency in an effort to lower the standards for pesticide contamination. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the kind of uh, mindset we're dealing with here. Uh, there, there presently uh, are some very serious, serious. Uh, just let me read this. In the United States, AIDS was passed on to thousands of, he of hemophiliacs uh, through this un unsavory business uh, that Bayer has been found guilty of. Many of whom died in one of the worst drug-related medical disasters in history. This is from the New York Times. While admitting no wrongdoing, Bayer and three other companies that made the, con the concentrate have paid hemophiliacs about $600 million mm -hmm. to settle more than 15 years of lawsuits accusing them of making dangerous products. Uh, the medicine was made using pools of plasma mm -hmm. from 10,000 or more donors where there was no screening for AIDS. Right. Um, so there you have it. <clears throat> well, Mark, there was some good news that did come out um, this week. The, there was a pharmaceutical that caused um, dramatic damage to um, a patient, a woman, and she was a musician. She lost her arm, so therefore couldn't um, play music, which was her livelihood. And under the Food and Drug Law Act, there is an umbrella there that protects pharmaceutical companies from being sued directly by their consumers. Mm -hmm. Under this umbrella, the only, I believe the, the consumer can only sue the FDA, but these things never really go through. But as long as they get that stamp of approval from the FDA, they are covered for any personal liability, personal injury liability. Now, she brought the case to the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. and just this past week, the Supreme Court ruled that she should be able to... So that they, they ruled in her favor? They ruled in her favor, but this is not just a ruling in her favor, but this is a ruling in on our all favor. of our yes. favors for exactly some of the same reasons that you're bringing up right now. Well, li listen to this. Uh, this is, again, from the uh, May 22, 2003 uh, New York Times article written by Walter Bogdanich and Eric Coley. It goes on, but in Hong Kong and Taiwan alone, more than 100 hemophiliacs got HIV after using Cutter's old medicine, according to records and interviews. Many have since died. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when you're talking about hundreds of people um, it, that were infected with the AIDS virus, many of whom have died, mm -hmm. uh, for the simple reason that uh, they wanted to continue to sell this infected, unscreened product, mm -hmm. 
uh, just simply to get rid of inventory. Yeah. And of course, they what sell kind of, it. What kind of conscience is that? Well, of course, they sell it to, you know, a community of people that doesn't have the resources to get help or legal help or any retribution whatsoever. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unconscionable. So when we think about, again, you know, when folks are thinking, well, come on, you're getting a little bit too uh, paranoid about, uh, about this Baxter case that we just mentioned a little while ago. I don't think we are at all. I think we, I think we need to get more involved, more informed, more active uh, in the process of getting answers for ourselves. I mean, we're the ones that not only deserve the answers, but in, unfortunately are in desperate need of the answers. These are desperate times. Yeah, no, we see profiteering in almost every aspect of, of any industry that is out there. And, you know, we certainly have seen profiteering in the, you know, in the banking industry in the last, um, you know, three to six months. And, you know, it, it's just another, um, you know, way of profiteering. It's profiteering and pirating of the human body. And it, it's been going on for a long time, but it has gotten to a point where it is out of control and people are getting really, really hurt. But once again, you know, it makes me think that if there is indeed someone of this kind of a distorted mindset within Baxter Pharmaceutical and Bayer Pharmaceutical um, that could conceivably dream up mm -hmm. these clandestine concepts mm -hmm. to really intermingle mm -hmm. a flu vaccine, you know, with a deadly virus yeah. to trigger a pandemic, you know, with any kind of thoughts uh, around the idea that, hey, we own the patents on the solution. Yeah. So let's create the problem uh, and we'll come up, with, you know, obviously come shining across uh, like the cavalry here at the end of it with the solution. Right. Um, how often is this done? What other kind of rogue practices are we missing? Right. You know, this was a situation that got caught. Right. What the heck are we missing along the way? We're, what has been taking place that we weren't paying attention to or that we weren't fortunate enough to catch at the 11th hour? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So um, anyway, what it brings me full circle to is the <laughs> idea that folks really need to, I go back once again as I sign off every Sunday night, the past seven years. Be wise, be aware, be well. You can't be well unless you are wise and aware yeah. in this world. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Um, so we're going to basically give people some really good information during this break. Grab your pens and pencils because it's my assumption and it's my sincere belief that you're going to need antiviral support like you've never needed it one day fairly soon. Uh, because I, for one, simply do not trust those in charge with handling and making decisions around these potentially lethal uh, viruses and germs that are out there right now. These pathogens are, are, are absolutely deadly. And, uh, and it's unfortunate that so many folks out there are simply left unaware about what they might consider doing if, in fact, something like that were to happen. It's tough talk, it's real talk, and it's something that we need to kind of get up to speed about. We're going to basically get you the information when we come back from these series of breaks. Stay right where you are. Hi there, this is Markman Cole, the Natural Health and Healing Show. I know that so many of you out there are passionate about the latest cutting-edge nutritional information and would like to go on to that next level. I'm proud to announce that our new natural health care offices and cohesit are offering personalized nutritional consultations. At Santi Holistic Healing, you'll experience an informative, individualized nutritional consultation by one of my finest personally trained nutritional experts. Your consultant will test you for specific food allergies and supplements. Together, you will chart out a personalized, optimal nutritional roadmap that will detail your healthiest foods and nutritional supplements, even specific doses. If that's not enough, we also offer relaxing healing massage at Santi Holistic Healing. Whether it's nutritional consulting or healing massage that you're interested in, we at Santi Holistic Healing are prepared to give you the healing experience of a lifetime. Call us at 781-383-3393. That's 781-383-3393 for the healing experience of a lifetime. Hi, this is Laura from Good Health. We're all about smart, simple nutrition. Let us help you keep your resolutions and achieve all your personal goals. Lose weight, feel better, and look your very best today. Thanks for listening to the Health and Healing Show. We hope to see you soon. <laughs> All righty, welcome back and welcome, Candida. How's it going? Everybody? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You My daughter it. turned nine yesterday. She's so cute. She's a doll. Your kids are all. I know cute. she's sleeping, but she's listening. Happy birthday! Isabel. Happy birthday, Isabel. <laughs> she likes to listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, what you got going on, girl? 
Wow. First of all, the magazine looks great. Did you see it? Yes. It's awesome. You got a picture of a fuzzy man on the front. That's right. Everyone's Doctor. like, ooh, Santa Claus? No, I'm like, Dr. Andrew, <laughs> Dr. Andrew Wyla Claus. That's right. <laughs> Do you know I actually got a call from him? What did he say? And it was it was so bizarre. Someone was like, please hold for Andy. I'm like, Andy? Who's Andy? <laughs> and then he came on. I was like, he goes, Candita. And I was like, oh, No, my you should have said, Andy, my name's Candy. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I was definitely uh, feeling a little intimidated, but we had a great talk. Good, good. It was very, very nice. He's a good guy. Very exciting. Um, oh, we have a couple of uh, things to talk about tonight. Good Health Natural Foods. We sure do. Aren't they awesome? They have a um, health and beauty. They have a beauty department. I don't know if most folks know about Yeah, they do. And uh, they carry a great variety of all-natural and organic skin, hair, and beauty products. Um, and their vitamin associates are there to help with any questions that anybody will have. But we were talking about it today. Wouldn't it be neat to get, like, these neat um, health and beauty products in your Easter basket instead of all that candy that they Great throw in idea. There? So we're kind of pushing that. I like that. Because uh, stay away from the candy and try some of the new arrivals oh, that they boy. have. They have the uh, Himalayan crystal salt inhalers, which is a drug-free, I'll give you a little, basic. Let me give you one little thing, one little tip about sugar. Okay. A recent genetic study found that sugar stays in the body and affects genes negatively for 14 days. One serving of sugar. Really? Every single serving of sugar affects your gene response for 14 days negatively. Okay? So when you're talking about going in, into a different concept for an Easter basket, great idea. Thank you. Save those genes and save those genes for those kids. They're going to need them. It's just unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Um, so the Himalayan crystal salt inhalers, it, it is, um, and it's actually approved by the FDA, which they wanted me to mention as well, is on sale right now for thirty nine ninety nine. originally $50. And this is great for um, kids that have asthma, allergies, bronchitis, or adults, um, emphysema, sinus congestion, smoker's cough, headaches, and a lot more. And they, and they really do help quite a bit, too. Mm. I've had a lot of patients use them with great... Great success. And they wanted me to mention that they have um, all different sorts of lotions and uh, botanicals um, for your hair, for your skin. Uh, a lot of them are certified vegan. Mm -hmm. um, the Obri Organics, I think we talked about that last time. They have a whole nice. cosmetic line there. Um, they have a huge display. It's, it's really nice. You could actually check out the different tints and shadows. We were playing. <laughs> <laughs> they have testers. <laughs> Having fun with the samples. We were. Um, so just check it out. A couple of the labels they carry. Kiss My Face. Um, Alba. Um, there's a lot of anti-aging um, stuff. And there's also the natural hair color, mm -hmm. which is fascinating because some people don't want to use all those, especially pregnant right. women. Yep. Uh, or nursing moms. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to be careful about a lot of the toxic residues and those things. And uh, Good Health does have a number of hennas and natural coloring agents and stuff in there. And they do. They have a terrific beauty section. 28 gorgeous colors. <laughs> 28 <laughs> gorgeous <add> colors. <laughs> <laughs> no ammonia or harsh chemicals. So they carry everything from the produce to natural cosmetics and skin care. I say we send Bill Clark over. Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So good health, so good natural health. foods, of course, needs to... Well, first of all, before we do that, all, the, all of the uh, products that we're going to talk about this evening that are very powerful, powerful, powerful natural antiviral products, mm -hmm. uh, which should be on hand not just for the real virulent flus that so many people are unfortunately getting hit with uh, often these days, uh, but again, in the event of you know some of these horrible accidents, uh, which you know obviously this looks like it could well be the rule of the day, and if indeed it is, not to fret. There's some great solutions, and they do work. And that's based on CDC studies. Mm -hmm. So um, all these products we're going to talk about in a few moments, natural antivirals, are all available at Good Health Natural Foods. And that's real important news as well. Absolutely. And Good Health is located at 1637 Hancock Street over in Quincy. And you can call them there at 617-773-4925. 
or you might want to hook up with them down at 219 Columbia Road. That's Route 53 in Hanover. 781-826-0808 for all things natural. It is. Good Health Natural Foods. Nicely done. They have a website, too, for folks that might um, not know. It's goodhealthnaturalfood.com. And they always have their specials on there. I like the specials. Love them. <laughs> and uh, we have an event coming up on the 28th. We are so excited. And we're so excited about that. That's going to be a really terrific Saturday we're devoting to uh, teaching folks who are both allied health professionals as well as um, just folks interested in really taking charge of their health and the health of their families and loved ones. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm sharing the system uh, that I developed over the past 27 years. In the past couple of years, what we've done, of course, is done six-month extensive study programs, which we've had great turnouts for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now we're going to basically kind of shrink it down to an intensive or a series of intensives. Uh, remarkable, remarkable work that so many folks have already been through the program have uh, enjoyed practicing and Absolutely. really benefiting from. I, I, and it's amazing. I take walks during the day from time to time, do my three, four-mile walks, and I'll see people on route. I won't mention names, and they say, you know, my family has been so healthy this winter for the first time in years, if, if not ever. Um, so, you know, a lot of folks are, are sharing with me that they've really, really benefited and seen the great benefits. Absolutely. Also, a lot of allied professionals I get emails from and letters about how much more enriched their practices mm-hmm. are. So we've got some wonderful, wonderful uh, testimonials out there that uh, keep coming back. So people have really benefited from learning the system. But basically, it is a cutting-edge bioenergetic system that sort of includes old elements of Chinese medicine brought up to speed in a kind of contemporized, um, modern way. And we've sort of integrated some personalizing approaches to this. So individuals interested in knowing exactly what they can eat not what's generically healthy to eat, but what is specifically good for them uh, is are, are really tuning in through the system to tap in bioenergetically and learn systems for knowing what's best for them, what supplements, what dosages, how long to take the supplements for, et cetera, et cetera. So, so for example, a mom in her own home could, sometimes you get the supplements, you could actually put them in your hand and muscle test your child to see exactly sure yes, how yes. many what they should take. Absolutely, absolutely. And and foods as well. I mean, you could actually use the foods themselves. We've done tens of thousands of people for 27 years and just had remarkable, continued to have remarkable, remarkable success, you know, practicing the system that we've developed, you know. And I mean, look, when I started out 27 years ago, I just had my eyes and ears open as to what people needed, what worked best, and just went back at the end of the day and really in many respects just started my work when the work day ended Mm -hmm. and really crunching this stuff and putting it all together and making programs come together for folks to benefit from. So that's what we're doing. If folks want to learn the system, it's going to be from uh, 9 to 6 p.m. at the Coastal Church. Wow. Uh, and it's going to be a one-day intensive. And, uh, you know, of course, you can contact Candida. And why don't you give, her, give the folks sure. here? 781-834-2728. Or they could go on to healthylivingvideo.com. And there's, they could click on Dr. Mark Mancola's seminars. And there's a whole big description there about everything that folks will learn. Great. I look forward to it, and uh, it is really, so really a once in a lifetime. So uh, we'd love to see a lot of folks. I know. You should stress that because you, you – Yeah, we, we won't be doing this forever, folks. No. You know, this is the time. You, you know, have to just jump right in. A lot of things going on, and, and uh, this is exactly the window that you want to take that There is a in. little uh, fear with, um, with, like, folks that aren't in the allied health professional. This is no going to be easy. We've right? had – yes, absolutely. We, we really chunk it down. Mm-hmm. We simplify this. And not only that, I'm going to be there working – hands-on with people all day you've got questions you basically get answers you're going to go home with answers so bring in your your dictation tape players bring in your notebooks and your pens because you're going to get absolutely loaded with information uh and i give you my email address so if you need to kind of sift through this information you feel a little overloaded with info uh you've got the rest of your life to email me and sort it out and break it down and tune it in uh, but you're going to get a once-in-a-lifetime hit of information that's going to make a lifetime's worth of difference. So Amazing. we're going to work hard at getting the info out there and uh, look forward to it. So, Thank you. again, that's going to be on the 28th of March. 28th, it's a Saturday, 6 to 9 at the Coastal Church in Hanover. 
awesome. And I you'll look forward get to, to meet Catherine. Yes. <laughs> Catherine Foley will be there. Catherine Foley will be there. We'll be in the house. <laughs> Candida, thank you so much. We have a May event. Is it too soon? To yeah, it? we'll talk about well, that one next after. Uh, yeah, okay. we'll, we'll I was so excited that you're doing that, too, though. <laughs> well. Because folks are going to actually get to see the uh, little pr- premiere. Of yes. Yes. I will talk about we'll that. Talk secret. About that. Secret. That's right. We love keeping <laughs> secrets. Have a good night. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to take uh, a little short break right now, and we'll be back in just a few moments. Stay right where you are. Don't miss the 9th Annual International Herb Symposium, celebrating the healing power of plants, June 19th through the 21st at Wheaton College in Norton, Mass. It's a symposium to touch your heart and soul, as well as your mind and spirit. This gathering is for all people, enraptured by the healing essence of herbs. Learn from an extraordinary gathering of herbal teachers, elders, and healers from around the world. There will be over 90 workshops for all levels of interest and experience, and over 50 teachers representing 12 countries. To register or for more information, call 802-479-9825. That's 802-479-9825. Or visit internationalherbsymposium.com. The 9th Annual International Herb Symposium, June 19th through the 21st at Wheaton College. Hi, this is Teresa from Healing Matters in Plymouth. Along with snow and ice, winter brings with it a host of health concerns. Aching bags from too much shoveling, lingering colds and coughs, even depressed mood from lack of sunlight. At Healing Matters, we offer a variety of complementary therapies, such as acupuncture, Reiki, integrated energy therapy, and hypnosis, to help with these and any other health concerns you might have. Call us at 508-747-8283 to schedule an appointment for more information. Again, that's 508-747-8283. At Healing Matters Plymouth, your healing matters. All righty. We're coming back at you here. We uh, obviously want to follow up on some of what we've been uh, discussing with you earlier here in the broadcast that... Uh, you know, it's, again, an astounding story. I urge everybody to take a peek at it if you have an opportunity to get on your PC or your laptop and do some searching uh, because that's the only place you're going to find this information regarding the Baxter pharmaceutical contamination of the seasonal flu vaccine product that contained live avian bird flu virus. And uh, I would suggest that everybody go to the Toronto Sun And uh, if you go up to the Toronto Sun and you check out the Baxter contamination, you'll find everything you need to find. And again, uh, it's quite a remarkable story. But uh, in the backdrop of that, I think it's really important to bring forward the the important story here. And that is is that uh, we do not have to sit by idly feeling helpless Mm -hmm. uh, with all of this funny business going on behind us. I think it's a matter of really becoming proactive, self-empowered and uh, really getting to the bottom of what our potentials are here uh, as far as natural medicine. And there are some remarkable, remarkable natural medicines. The very first one that comes to mind uh, would be lauric acid. Yeah. You know, lauric acid uh, comes in many forms. Jara formulas, of course, has the extra virgin uh, coconut oil, yeah. which is a really important one. And, yeah. uh, you know, the monolaurin, which we talk about, or the lauricidin, which is Dr. John Cabara's product. But... Right. Uh, you know, regardless whether you're using monolaurin, lauricidin, or the Jaro extra virgin coconut oil, you're looking at a medium chain triglyceride fat. Yeah. You're looking at uh, lauric acid. And of course, as I point out many times on this broadcast, bird flu, as lethal and deadly as it is, is really an influenza A virus. Mm-hmm. And uh, back in 1982, uh, Dr. John Cabara, a gentleman that I'm proud to call a friend, and uh, Heierholzer, who worked with him at the Center for Disease Control back in 1982, did indeed prove in their Center for Disease Control research that the influenza A bird flu, if you will, avian flu, uh, is rendered helpless against the lauric acid. And the, the reason for that is because in their research they found that there are a number of lipid-encoded viruses, these viruses that have a layer of fat, a shield, mm-hmm. if you will, a shield of fat wrapped around them so that your immune system can't get at them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what the lauric acid does 
just both uh, unzip that fatty layer, uh, that fatty protective shield around these deadly viruses, but it also aggresses against them as an antiviral and supports your immune system's aggression against them as well. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, number one, I suggest that folks do get in the habit of thinking in terms of keeping some monolaurin or some loracidin or perhaps even, like we said, the Jaro extra virgin coconut oil uh, on hand and make sure that uh, you go to the site. I always want folks to do their little bit of research here. Loracidin is L-A-U-R-I-C-I-D-I-N. Loracidin or Loracidin, and you can um, check out their technical information. If you scroll down on their site to the technical information, you will actually see uh, a reference to the Center for Disease Contro Control Research of 1982 that I just spoke about, uh, performed by Holzer and Cabarro, right. uh, where they clearly documented the efficiency and the effectiveness uh, whereby uh, the influenza A was assaulted and defeated, if you will, by the, the presence and power of the uh, lauric acid, or in this case, monolaurin, loracidin, or uh, the coconut oils. So that's number one. And I know that uh, you feel real strongly about the, the Jaro Extra Virgin uh, coconut oil. Good product. Yeah, well, I mean, this is something that people can add to their diets and use as a replacement for where they would use um, butter or olive sure. oil. So it's a really... Good tasting product. It is very good tasting. And so it's a really easy addition, um, you know, to your daily diet. And it has that immune modulating effects to it with the monolaurin and mm -hmm. the lauric acid. Yep. So, you know, it's just something to do preventative and it sets your immune system up really well for handling those, all of the influenza viruses. Well, and keep this in mind because I just want to bring one little point up about it. It is a wonderful product <clears throat> and it's a delicious product as yeah. well, I might add. But maybe one thing that I <laughs> constantly seem to have to answer all the time about <laughs> coconut oil is the saturated fat. <laughs> and it the makes reason. me nuts, but the saturated fat that's in coconut oil is safe. Yeah. The short and the medium chains, uh, triglycerides, are, are the saturated fats. The short and medium chains are actually sent directly through the portal, the portal artery into the liver. So right. the liver basically breaks those down. You don't have any problem. Right. The long chains, unfortunately, require bile salts from the small intestines. Right. They tend to get trapped within the blood vessels, etc. So, you know, when you're talking about essential fatty acids, it's one thing. When you're talking about saturated fats, everybody has this sort of generic knowledge that, uh-oh, saturated fats are bad for you. Yeah. Not all of them, folks. The reason why that that happened, and I actually had a professor in college <laughs> repeat it right back to me, and I just thought it was hilarious. And, you know, and the professor said, well, everybody knows if it's solid at room temperature, it's bad for you. And <laughs> that was the very simple way that they were trying to educate people sure. about how to make choices about healthy fats. And, and, so, and, and make their jobs easier, by the way. Make their jobs easier, yeah. So what that does is it does basically separate fats into these two categories in a very easy way. Solid at room temperature are typically animal mm -hmm. fats yep. and, and dairy fats. So anything else is usually a vegetable fat. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where coconut oil breaks the mold. It's a vegetable oil, but it is solid at room temperature. Yep. But, does not. but it's safe. <laughs> I repeat, S-A-F-E. Okay, yeah. so when you see that your coconut oil has saturated fat, would you please not worry about it? Yeah. The only studies that ever, ever implicated coconut oil as a dangerous fat were hydrogenated coconut oils. Yeah, and hydrogenated any oil is bad. I mean, it's the infusion of hydrogen gas. Hydrogen into, gas. In oil with hydrogen gas, free radicals. Yeah, and your body doesn't even recognize that extra, yeah. extra hydrogen molecule. So they, they different will, animal altogether. Yeah, and they'll do that to olive oil. They'll do it to canola oil. They'll, you know, whatever. It's, you know, natural coconut oil. So the medium chain fats that you're dealing with are safe, safe, safe. Yeah. All right, now we've got that out of the yeah. way. Thank you. All right. Also really important here, I, I love Andrographis paniculata, and Absolutely. everybody's saying, what? Yeah. If you go into Good Health Natural Foods, you can see something called cold care, K-O-L-D-K-A-R-E, cold care. That's yeah. all you have to think of because that is endographis. Yeah. And endographis actually is often referred to as um, Indian echinacea. Yeah, it is. Uh, but it's a really wonderful, wonderful antivirus. The Chinese, the Ayurvedics have used it for thousands of years, yeah. and it is ever so powerful. Do you know that that is one of the ingredients in Airborne? 
Is that right? Yeah, it really is. Smart move there. <laughs> very smart move. But uh, andrographis is a very, very reliable antiviral herb. Uh, it doesn't taste very good, but we're not going to ask you to saute it. We're going to ask you just to just to get the capsules or yeah. to get the, uh, the aerosols. There's a number of different ways that you can obtain it. Uh, but again, I recommend Cold Care, and Catherine just mentioned a different product as well. Oh, airborne! It's airborne yeah, is very great stuff. Popular, yeah, and it yeah. is that it's andrographis, and then also um, a combination of those Chinese Chinese herbs. Right, and andrographis uh, in the form of cold care, K O L D K A K A R E, is a three hundred milligram tablet. Mm-hmm. And I say, if you're really up against a nasty virus, you want to take about six of those a day, eighteen hundred milligrams. Uh, so monolaurin, I should give you some recommendations there. I'd recommend 600 milligram monolaurin capsules. And again, a nasty virus would uh, indicate four to six of those capsules as well. But again, if you're using andrographis, monolaurin, um, those are going to really help your immune system a great deal. Um, also, I, I'd like folks to get used to thinking in terms of lactoferrin and colostrum as a great immune enhancer and a natural, natural killer cell supporter. <laughs> Um, and the thing about um, lactoferrin is lactoferrin um, binds iron, free iron in your body. That's right. And viruses, that's what they metabolize to stay alive is free iron. So the premise being is if you can bind all of the free iron in your body, which right. is good for you anyhow, um, you're starving the virus and thus they can't replicate. Another really good antiviral product would be beta-glucans. Yeah. Beta-glucans is a great product. And Jaro has a wonderful yeah. 250 milligram yeah, beta-glucans. Yeah. Um, so you want to basically keep in mind here, we just talked about monolaurin, loracidin, or the um, Jaro extra virgin coconut oil. Those are your great lauric acid supporters in, in terms of antiviral support. Also, number two, we mentioned andrographis paniculata is an herb that's a very powerful antivirus agent. Um, and cold care is what I recommended, K-O-L-D-K-A-R-E, airborne, as uh, we just talked about also. And uh, beta 3D glucans are beta, you know, there's beta 3, beta 6. There's a number of different beta glucans that, uh, you know, a jar actually combines the 3 and the 6. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. You guys are all over it, per <laughs> usual. What else is new? So uh, uh, the Jaro makes a great beta glucans. Transfer Point makes a pretty potent one as well. Um, number four, I like the idea, as we pointed out, of lactoferrin colostrum. Uh, lactoferrin colostrum is a really terrific way to boot up your immune system, increase your natural killer cells, and make uh, uh, viruses miserable. Um, there are other agents that I'll mention as well. L-lysine, I'm still a great believer that lysine, which uses up arginine, and again, viruses of this nature tend to feed off of arginine, yeah. feed off of iron, and yeah. support themselves with copper as well. So yeah. uh, L-lysine is a really powerful antiviral agent. You may need a couple thousand milligrams, so I always suggest that folks get the 1,000 milligram mm-hmm. uh, capsules of lysine. One of my favorite natural antivirus uh, agents that is just so effective for me is the lemon balm tinctures. Yeah, it is. I, and I love the taste of them as well. They're yeah. delicious. And I like the um, the Quantum, of course, Quantum yeah. brand. <laughs> Quantum makes my favorite lemon balm yeah. tincture. And boy, is that ever wonderful. Any kind of herpetic viruses, any of the retroviruses, any flu viruses, it's extremely, extremely helpful yeah. to me. I find Full that it just potency. knocks yeah. them right out. Yeah. Great stuff. So that's lemon balm, B-A-L-M tincture. Of course, echinacea, I, I think there's... Um, uh, an awful lot of research out there in Europe from Europe that seems to uh, uh, talk a great deal about the potent powers of echinacea as an antiviral. Um, the medicinal teas, the medicinal herb teas are just wonderful, I yeah. think. Um, uh, those are great, and they're delicious echinacea teas as well. I like colloidal gold, of course. Colloidal gold, not silver. Silver is more effective uh, as an antibacterial. Colloidal gold is more effective as an antiviral. Um, and also, uh, the last on my list was homeopathic gelsemium, G-E-L-S-E-M-I-U-M. Those are the ones that I use for the most part and have great, great success. I mean, olive leaf extract is another uh, option that you might add to this equation. A 500 milligram capsule of olive leaf uh, five or six times a day if, uh, again, you're up against something really virulent. Uh, but those are really, for all intents and purposes, yeah. a pretty good uh, accoutrement of an- natural antiviral supports. You know, and that being said, um, it's always a good idea 
when you're not feeling good to pick up a couple of those things and keep them in your medicine cabinet because when you do get hit with the flu, it's always when you least expect it and when you when you least need it. You're absolutely (laughs) right. And and to really you're absolutely right. And to go back to to the um, to the lead this evening, you know, the the beginning of the broadcast to really get this 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 thought clear in your mind. Right. That um, unfortunately, there are some remarkably uh, nasty viruses out there that have been engineered. Yeah. And um, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of very serious issues, as we talked about, that are going to. It's just a matter of when, but there's going to be an awful lot of serious issues with intermixing of different strains, right. whether it's a laboratory accident like Baxter that we talked about, whether in fact it wasn't an accident, whether this is actually the rule of thumb and we're just learning about it. Uh, is difficult as it is, as it is to obtain information about it. You know, and it's very funny. The if you do watch the history of the avian flu virus, the avian flu virus was pretty much dead um, in like around the 1950s. And some researchers went in, and they were interested in looking at the virus for you know possible like genetic engineering and just kind of being prepared for there was a pandemic. You know, um, you know before prior to the 1950s yes. so they wanted to isolate it and look at it to develop protocols you know to prepare it against any other sort of you know mutated flu viruses like this and so the it was virtually dead and they found it in the lung tissue of a soldier that had died because of the old pandemic and they brought it out and they cultured it and they grew it up and then they you know sent it out to other labs to research it so it, it was pretty much dead and it was very much um, re-engineered back into life. Incredible. And and this little piece, too, that I didn't even mention this evening from Canadian television, it goes on and says, Baxter's error is reminiscent of a 2005 incident where a U.S. manufacturer of kits Mm -hmm. used by laboratories to test their detection capabilities included vials of H2N2 virus Mm -hmm. in several thousand uh, proficiency kits. H2N2, the virus that caused the 1957 pandemic, has not circulated since 1968 yeah. and is thought to be a prime candidate to cause the next pandemic. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, long story short is there are a number of strains out there that are being watched and who knows how carefully yeah. managed, handled, who knows how carefully. This is a very crazy world right now we're living in. And uh, my feelings are it's not all about just the negative. It's not all about the scare tactics. It's not all about frightening people so that we can manipulate them. It's really about empowering people and giving them the awareness that there's a tremendous amount of choice, a tremendous amount of flexibility, uh, strategic uh, capabilities that they have with regards to natural medicine. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yep. Keep that emergency kit in your medicine cabinet. Always have a, a flu entourage in there. Because like I said, it always hits when you're like, not now. <laughs> you know? You're absolutely right about that. You're absolutely right about that. And, you know, the other thing I want to bring up, too, that's really important, folks always, always ask me, is it really okay to take, like, a light dose of these things just yeah. for prevention? Absolutely. You yeah. can, Listen, these are natural medicines. You're not looking at side effects or contraindications for all intents and purposes. The things we mentioned this evening are safe to take one a day of uh, to prevent problems and if the virulency is really knocking at your door and looking like you're you're, you're weakening to it, uh, you can certainly go up in the doses on these things. So you're absolutely right, Catherine. Make sure you've got these things in your uh, in your kitchen or make sure that you've got them stocked up and ready for action because <laughs> the day is going to come. You're going to need these. Yeah. And yeah. hopefully, uh, hopefully it's just a flu vi- a virus yeah. that you're dealing with. But, uh, but nonetheless, there is a tremendous amount of power that you have over these viruses and it's extremely important to realize that uh that these are available they're over the counter they're they're fda approved etc so um important news and wow we went through that hour pretty pretty fast it pretty usual. Happens, yeah, so moves yeah. awfully, right under our nose um, we do want to mention also that um um last week we had a wonderful program uh, we had a great interview with tom silver and uh, he's ever so appreciative of a lot of the calls that he's got, a lot of the emails that he's gotten, and a lot of folks have uh, flooded him with interest and, and with good reason. He was absolutely spectacular, and he just asked me to, uh, to thank everybody for their interest, and, uh, and uh, he's thinking about us back here, and uh, he's out on the West Coast, of course, but he's going to come back on and do another interview, so we're really excited about that. And uh, keep in mind, every Wednesday, right? Yes. NECN. NECN every Wednesday, 945, 1045, 1145, because you are what you eat, folks. Yeah. We've uh, we've got some great guests lined up, and we have some interesting uh, 
some interesting things that uh, we're, we're going to be springing on you in the weeks ahead as well. So um, we just want to make sure that we, we uh, keep you informed about all the, the latest information regarding our changes, which are all very good, very powerful, and positive changes, as yours are, I'm sure. And uh, we can do that through our website, of course. And folks who are not aware of what our website is, www.maxhealing.com. Maxhealing.com, easy enough, one word. And uh, stay tuned for Dr. Julie Johnson and Beth, of course. They'll be in in just a moment or two. And until next Sunday, <laughs> this is Mark Mincola and Catherine Foley both reminding you, please be wise, be aware, be well. Make it a healthy week. Good night. Thank you for joining Mark Mincola for the Natural Health and Healing Show. Call Mark each Sunday evening at 8 o'clock for the latest news.